Perfect. Starting. Great stuff. The webinar is on. The webinar is on and the numbers are coming in. I'm really pumped about this one. I love it when I actually haven't had an interview or discussion with uh, the person we're going to be digging deep with, and that is Johnny Nichols. Um, though we have met, I have done training at their office. I've actually, Johnny, I've come to your office three times, by the way. There you go. <laughs> three, three times I've done it there. So what happens is when I come and do training for Harcourt's uh, Tony Jenkins, which um, is Harcourt's Gold, I think. Um, Homewood. Homewood, sorry, Harcourt's Homewood. Right, so Tony. That's right. So uh, in Christchurch, look at these numbers building up. Beautiful. The great news is, but today, Frank, is yesterday we had the Harcourts team on, including the great CEO, Brian Thompson, and he was unhappy because he's still in a lockdown there. Uh, but that's not the case for Johnny. John's got a sprint in his step. He's had a great year. And I believe, Johnny, in Christchurch, you aren't in a lockdown. Am I right there? Yeah, that's correct. So we're, um, we do business as usual. Um, so we're back to what we call uh, level one. So uh, we're operating as usual, which is fantastic. So open homes and, and buyer appointments, etc. So we're probably a little bit sheltered down here compared to the North Island, but we're lucky we're maximizing that. Love that. Yeah. Fr Frank, I'm really pumped about this conversation. I know that the relationship here is because uh, Johnny uses AIM, the social media product um, that uh, campaign, tracks, campaign Tracks got. And by the way, everyone, don't kid yourself. Just putting a story on Instagram, getting three or 4,000 people liking your story, including, you know, a waiter in Czechoslovakia ain't going to get you a listing in your core market. Like being famous on Instagram is like being rich in Monopoly. The point <laughs> is you want to target the right people. And I've got to tell you, that's the reason that I like AIM. By the way, Frank, can I ask you, did yeah. you come up with, with the, the acronym AIM because it aims to find the buyer or is there more to it? So, yeah, so there's two two elements to it. So, yes, of course, AIM is it's a targeted approach to find the right buyers and sellers. And then the second element is it's advanced internet marketing. So that's the acronym. Okay. So, listen, Johnny, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you work? How long in real estate? You know, what sort of uh, levels of, you know, listing sales you do? Just give us everyone a bit of an overview of who you're all about. Yeah, so we've been in the business now six years here at Harcourt's Grenadier. Um, so came from a different town. So came, went to university here, came out of um, university, knew three people who owned houses about six years ago when I was 24. So uh, it was my brother, my sister and my rugby coach. Um, rang them all twice, didn't get a listing. I thought it was going to be a little bit harder than what I thought initially. <laughs> so um, we, start, we, we started cold. So um it was a lot of cold business. Now we've used sort of digital name to obviously help, I guess, uh, layer that. Um, but yeah, but really enjoying it and into the seventh year now. We're growing maybe 30 or 40% each year, but on track to do 100 deals this year. Um, but it's just, and we keep learning and adapting and growing. And I guess social and aim is a bit of a part of that. But yeah, we, we started cold and we're getting a lot of our business from other business. Okay. A lot of the people that watch our webinars are in fact people that are maybe only doing 20 deals a year, right? Well, they are people that are sort of just, you know, they're coming up the path of real estate. Some of them are, are beginners and some of them have been around for a while, but they just can't get their business to the next level. You use the word cold. When you are working in a market that's cold, Johnny, tell me some of the stuff that you did to get you in the game in real estate. What, what's your method of actual, you know, prospecting, for instance? Yeah, so when, when, from when we started and it was cold, it was just basically I was going around all the agents, I was getting old open home registers, I was door knocking, um, expired listings, um, we were going through trade me, etc. But I basically had 36,000 numbers and I was, I was calling through there. So it was really cold, hard business. We'd call a street, for example, and say, hey, we've just listed um, 23 Smith Street, just sold 24 Smith Street. Um, do you know anyone that's looking at buying and selling? And it, was, it was that cold. But I mean, I got two calls last week that people I called call five years ago. So mm -hmm. I think where we've learned and adapted and done well is we just built relationships over that one, two, three, four year period without much expectation return. And so that's probably where we're really good is we were disciplined over a number of years. And now we're, we're starting to be rewarded for that. And all my business is warm and hot. Um, may I ask, how long did it take of cold calling to give you some sort of, you know, results? It probably took about a year 
to start to start, really start seeing that it was working. Um, and then it was probably years three and four when our business really started to go to another level. So those first two years when you're 24 and you know no one that owns real estate, it doesn't, I don't think it matters whether you're 25 or 65, you can always grow your business. But I think we learned to adapt and build relationships. No one would be rewarded down the track. But it was definitely a year or two until we started doing some reasonable sort of numbers. Well, they say if you're good enough, you're old enough. And as far as I'm concerned, that, um, you know, age is, uh, is a self-limiting belief. By mm. the way, Frank, it's not age. Not, it's not just young. I have a lot of people that say to me, Tom, you know, I was a school teacher. I've left teaching. I'm 58 years of age. You know, am I too old? I think fundamentally what people care about is a good human being to show up to serve. And real estate is not a highly sophisticated skill. It's find a house, find a buyer, match them up. Trust is trust is the commodity that we have in real estate, right? And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're 21 or if you're 61, um, uh, you can be a trustworthy person. I want to ask you, Johnny, you, you know, you've been very good in explaining some of the lead sources, but, you know, um, old files from the office. Is that like orphan data? People that people that didn't have an agent that had dealt, dealt with the office in the past. Is that what you were calling? Yeah, it was orphan data, definitely. So we had a probably an older older um, lot of agents in the office when I started, and more and more younger ones are coming through now, which is exciting. But a lot of people that weren't getting called. So old over home registers, expired listings, and bits and pieces. So I literally went and introduced myself to the six year old agents. We've got a big company here. Um, and got those and just took a very small fee, if anything, and just built as many relationships as possible. So I was just adding data, adding data, adding data, and then try to put a process in place that had touch points along the way. Um, so I'd call those people every eight weeks, three months, sales in the area, just trying to add value everywhere I could. What do you say to people that you call Cole? What's the con conversation sound like? I mean, I'm sure there's different things to different people, but give me a bit of an overview of the sort of things you'd say. I have to try and remember what I said, but I, I'm, I've said it enough times, so I'm sure I can, I can, <laughs> sure I can recite it. But it went something like, hi, hi, Tom, Johnny Nichols here from Harkowitz Grenadier. I'm so sorry to call you out of the blue. The point of my call is we've just sold 36 Smith Street and just listed 36 uh, Smith Street. I just want to know, are you, your friends, your family, your colleagues, or anyone you know in the marketplace looking at transacting over the coming years? And I'll just shut my mouth. Beautiful. So... You know, to everyone that's watching, Frank, he's demonstrated what I call the law of because, and that is you never call anyone without a strong because. The yeah. word he used was the point of my call, which is like the purpose or the because of the call. Yeah. And I think a lot of people struggle in real estate. In fact, I just got off a coaching session with, uh, with a couple of clients and, you know, they said, you know, we... We hate prospecting because we wouldn't like it happening to us. And I said, why wouldn't you like it happening to you? And they said, oh, well, you know, when someone just calls and says, hey, you know, I'm just calling, you know, I'm a real estate agent. I'm just calling to check in, touch base. I said, well, that's part of the problem. If mm -hmm. your calls don't have value attached to them, you've got to show value. You've got to do value. You've got to give more value. You've got to move away from a commodity and be a value-added provider. Show more, do more, give more. And I think you were doing that. You were saying, hey, we've listed this. We've sold this. So good listing. And then you also said about expired listings. I'm just curious, how would you approach an expired listing, uh, Johnny? I, well, so what I was doing is I never I never shattered my nest, by the way. So this is outside of Harcourts. It might be Ray White, Bailey's, Mike Pirro, et cetera. But at that point in time, the market wasn't that hot. So a lot of stuff would expire, right? Unlike probably markets in Aussie at the moment too. So I'd get to eight weeks. There's a 90-day term. I'd get eight weeks in, which is 60 days. I'd send them a letter just that I'm going to be in touch and that you perhaps haven't got it under contract or I see it hasn't sold. Um, basically wondering why it hasn't sold and then I was going to door knock them in two weeks' time. So a couple of weeks before that ended, I'd go and door knock them and try and build a relationship. But that, that's all I was doing on that front. What do you think the... Um, Breaking the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think the... Um, so you, when you're giving the letters, are you just putting in the letter box or are you slipping it under the door? Like how many people, when you, when you spoke to them, had actually seen the letter? Do you, like, were there many people that were like, you know, expecting it? Yeah, most had seen the letter. So I gave them two weeks before I door knocked them. Yeah. So yeah. I'd have seen the letter, I'd pre and door knocked yeah. them. So I, I, again, like my call, I said, I'm so sorry to call you out of the blue. That was my door knock version of trying to bring down the facade. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That um, makes sense. And I don't know if it built trust as such, but I think it, I think it certainly helped fast track the relationship. 
Yes, that makes sense. Can I can I ask? So, because I'm quite curious, is um, you know, obviously you started at 24, you, you know, six years in, you're doing you know great numbers for you know for the amount of time you're in the in the business for. Can I ask where did you learn it from? Like, so you've you've come into an office that you said is quite large. Was there you know really good training that happened within that office, or how how did you get to where you are today um, during that journey? Uh, I think when I started, I. I called around the top 10 um, agents in South Island, top 10 in Auckland, yeah. top 20 Aussie. And whether it was text or email or phone, I thought, why create my own blueprint to success when I can, I can rip and duplicate someone else's? I thought, yeah, I know. No then we've heard it all before, but um, there was, I thought there's no secrets in this business. So I rang around everyone and yeah. there was a real common denominator. And that was connect with more people, build more relationships, do it over a sustained period of time. And, yeah. and there's no way you can't win and you can learn the skills along the way. So I guess that work ethic and getting in the in the trenches for the first few years is perhaps what allowed us to get to another level. And we're nowhere near where we want to be, but we're, we're tracking in the right direction. That's awesome, love that. And and you you mentioned you 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 have a team set up now. Like what when what at what year did you decide to start implementing your your team? I guess we should probably tell everybody what does your team structure look like at the moment. Yeah, so I've got two PAs. So one's my sister. She's been with me since two years into the business. Awesome. We've just hired a second PA, and then I've got one co-agent with me. Yeah. So he's helping manage business. So I'm not one of these agents or teams that's got eight agents like like some of the Kiwis do. Um, it's pretty pretty small team um, mm -hmm. and pretty structured. And obviously we're we're moving up and, and doing more and more business. So I was just getting those structures in place. But my recommendation would be as soon as you're getting caught in the office a bit much and you're in a position to do, um, get a get a PA on. And I think my business doubled as soon as I got a PA on. And I know it's a it's such a hard commitment to make. Yeah. I always heard it, heard it, heard it, heard it. And I was like, right, maybe it's time. It was yeah. one webinar or seminar I did. I thought maybe it's time to get a PA. And you now I can I can see why they've always recommended it. What do you think the shift is? Because it's interesting. I have, I have a few good friends uh, in the real estate and the same thing, they're you know, asking me, confiding me on the weekend, like, should I do it? Should I do it? Running the numbers and going, oh, I don't know. And then, you know, two months later, like, oh, that was the you know, best decision I did. What do you think the shift is when you put, you know, a PA on or someone to help you with the admin? Yeah, I, I, some people put PAs on and they stay backwards or, uh, sorry, stay the same, go backwards. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of that is do, actually learning to let go. Because yeah. I reckon three or four months in, knew the skill set, but I was still looking over the shoulder. So yeah. I think someone you obviously like, you trust, and that can do the job is so critical, but learning to let go. So there's no point getting a PA on and then sitting there while they're doing advertising and not being on the phone or in front of someone. So I think the shift was learning to let go and ensuring now I measure each day upon how many um, outbound calls and how many meetings I'm doing. So it's being face-to-face -face or on the phone. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. Makes I really, you know, I really... Um, Listen, I rarely do this, but I think I've actually got it opened up now, Frank. So what I might do, and this is putting people on the spot, I just want to actually show, wow, it's just that it was up on my screen. Um, um, essentially, what we're trying to do is, to everyone that's watching this webinar right now, I've just pulled something out of the real estate gym here. An effective business unit, should look something along the lines of this, where you've got a clearly defined swim role for an agent. And if you actually have a look at that here, this is what Johnny Nichols should be doing. He should be managing his pipeline, having expectation meeting, vendor meetings, negotiating, selling, doing open for inspections, buy management, callbacks, networking, prospecting. And then with your PAs, red denotes being an admin-based PA, they're going off and they're doing the stuff that is what I call 10 or $20 hour duties. And I want to remind everyone, the pilot does not serve drinks on the plane, if you think about that. They specialize in their main part of the job. Then down here, you've got a blue PA, which I consider a lead generator or buyer manager. And I can pretty much tell you, Johnny, if um, you know your, your, your team... Your team roughly would look something like that, where you've got yourself, lead agent, someone doing admin. Um, uh, I think the secret, um, Johnny, is that people do it sooner rather than later, because if you do it later and the work is clogged up, you become overwhelmed, you get the shits, you hate the work, you're stressed because you don't know what to do. So I reckon you got you're better off starting starting sooner rather than later. What do you, Johnny? What do you reckon? How many sales a month should you be doing before you reckon you put on that first assistant? 
I don't I, I'm whether it's a volume thing or a sale thing I'm not sure but if you're doing the right tasks and you're getting caught back in the office I think it's time I didn't I didn't I didn't have the money to do it either I arranged I arranged with our directors um, they could see I was working they could see I was here early I was here late and I said what about you guys invest in me and, and they did so they, they helped me on that and they basically took that off my commissions and I guess allowed us to move further and further and further. So have those discussions with your, with your owners if you don't know either. Um, I think it's important, but I think it, but to answer your question, it would have been one or two deals a month I put someone on. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, and any tips on managing a team to those that are watching here, like the do's and don'ts from what you've learned? I think I'm still learning every day, but uh, and it's, it's fine tuning it, isn't it? But my my first PA was my sister, um, and that sounds sounds odd, but we've got a very good relationship, so we can tell each other how it is. Yeah, um, so first, yeah, yeah. Firstly, it was always going to go one or two ways, wasn't it? It's been three years, so we're doing something right. But um, I'd say find someone you you like and you trust. You've got to have someone that you really trust in your business. Um, and that goes for both of your PAs that you can leave them there and you know they're doing the job. And I know that's easier said than done. I like I wanted to get someone that was in the business already that knew a few, few different things about the business. Um, and we've, I mean, we've got KBIs and a few different bits and pieces that have to meet. We're catching up every morning um, for 15 minutes um, because they know I want to get all those questions and stuff out of the way. But that, that'd be a couple of main things is find someone you like and you trust in your, in your business because it's very easy to go backwards with getting the wrong clientele, the wrong people, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Can I just touch on, you know, like real estate, Frank, if I had to simplify it, look, I like it. I like every bit of, you know, real estate when I'm teaching, I just want to simplify it. For instance, database, I say in your database, you've got have mets, have not mets, right? And you want to move your have not mets to become have mets. In prospecting, I say there's two types. You either chase or you attract, right? So you either reach out or you actually put an ethical bribe and get them to come to you, right? So I want to talk about, you know, the social media piece, right? It's a, it's a piece that um, I love. It's very misunderstood because I see a lot of people having a crack at social media and between showing their Rolex watch or showing them being successful or trying to do a market wrap you see that they just sort of do lots of different things and pieces. You know, with social media, what are your biggest learnings on social media? I mean, I know that you use a structured product. Is that part of your marketing presentation? Do you go in pitch for BPA yes. and say, we're doing this social? Yeah, and when Tina said, what does AIM do for you? How does it get you more listings? And I thought about that because it's nothing direct but it's exactly that. I use it in my listing presentation. So, and I always say to like potential clients, um, a lot of agents, probably 90% of agents are still reactive rather than proactive. They're going in there, they're putting up the signboard, the photos, going on two real estate portals. And there's this acceptance that 3000 people across those watches are still good. Whereas there's an opportunity now to reach 100,000 plus buyers um, during the course of that campaign. So I say that to my owners. And then I say, look, this is how we're going to do it. AIM obviously is massive and social. Okay. Now, um, how much do you get out of the... When you're pitching for VPA, social media, how much do you ask for? Uh, we're getting about $500 at the moment, which is, which is largely around Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Can you, can you, can you just, mate, pre pretend I'm a vendor. I'm at a listing presentation. I'm listing with you. Johnny, you've really impressed me. I want to go with you. I want to go with Harcourt's Grenadier, um, all of that. Um, now, I want to ask you, how do you actually ask me for $500? I, I'd, I'd love you to give me the script, the dialogue, the, the, the approach. Do you, know, do you know what? Generally, lately, especially lately, I'm in that door because of the, uh, the layer of social media anyway. So, they've, so that's where I'm getting the listing. They already see me on social. They see it's popping up. They're getting targeted by Google AdWords, et cetera. They know it works. So more often than not, I've already seen how, how important it is. So basically, it, it's, it's half the job's already done. Do you know what I mean? I get I, Yeah, I, I get that. I understand. It, it, it's, like, it's like if I walk into the Hilton Hotel and I ask for a bottle of sparkling water, 
I know that I'm not going to be paying a dollar. I'll be paying ten dollars. I said I'm already pre-sold. I know that's the deal. And what you're sort of saying is, they're already expecting that that's part of the deal. Familiarity uh, breeds trust, right? You know, so they've already seen that time and time and time again. So you're right, it becomes this expectation. And that's where it's had the most powerful effect on our business is that we're, and we're talking to the right people and we're talking to them because they've seen our name, they've seen our symbols, they've seen us on social, they've seen the retargeting. And so there's this, I guess, perception that, and, and they already believe in it. So it's half, I mean, it's half the pitch done, is it not? That makes sense. Do you, yeah, absolutely. Do you, and roughly, what's your VPA campaign? What do you normally get? Oh, oh, my average house price is eight uh, eight hundred thousand, and we're about four thousand approximately. So one percent of the value of the home, something like that. Where's the four grand go? Um, so about five hundred goes to social, and then it's a mixture between digital and print. Still a big believer in print as well. I think you need to be everywhere. Right. So um, um, three week campaign in print. Three uh, generally either one or two, depending. Generally not the third week because that's the Wednesday before the Thursday option home uh, option. So it's a little bit late in the piece. So we try and make it the first 10 days really hammering it hard. And like I always ask where our buyers come from, like we're still getting 10 to 20% of our buyers from print media. Over a 40 person campaign, that's eight buyers. Do you want to be talking to those eight buyers in the marketplace when it comes to selling your largest asset? Something along the lines of that. How do you, how do you, how do you sell print in a non-print world that we're in? Yeah, yeah. Good question. Are you still a big fan of print? I am. I am. The only issue is the organisation that um, I'm aligned to, um, News Corporation, uh, closed a uh, hundred of its. Uh, 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 so yeah. I don't have a hun- I don't have a hundred to actually spruik as much anymore, right? Um, yeah. I'm still listen, Johnny. I, I mean, I'm not stupid. My next door neighbour is a multi-millionaire that's buying a house at the moment. And I can tell you, he's not on TikTok and he's not on mm. Snapchat, right? So let's be clear. I know what this guy does. I see him in the cafe flipping through traditional media. Yeah, absolutely. So where and how I sell it, everyone's different, but I'm meeting one in four buyers from Auckland every Sunday. So I'm meeting 100 buyers a uh, weekend and 25 of them from Auckland. Now, if they're searching up line, it's all search engine specific. So we might have a listing in Kashmir, but they've been searching Hillsborough, Opawa, and Sumner because they don't know Kashmir is a prominent area. They come down here, they pick up the blue book, they pick up the press, and they go, look, perfect product. And he goes, yeah, but wrong location. Let's just go and have a look. All of a sudden, they're there, they're bidding, they're, they're there to win. But I think sometimes and often people are willing to compromise on location to get the right product. And I think if they're really active buyers, they're picking up those, those print mediums and they're there. So that, that's, in a nutshell, how I sell it. Okay. I want to ask, to me, this is what I've heard you say in the, you know, 25 minutes we've been together, that it doesn't matter what age you are um, and it doesn't matter whether you've come out of another industry with no experience, if you're prepared to put at least a one-year thorough traditional cold calling approach to real estate, that gets you in the game. And what you need to do is focus on a combination of expired listings, any pieces of information that you can get, build relationships with senior salespeople in your office, um, uh, try and get access to data from people that have sold or listed property there that are no longer there with the office. And that's your start. Start talking to those people. Get a bit of runs on the board and you sort of start moving forward. You get off the runway and you're up in the air. Then you get layered with a bit of media, social and traditional for you, it's aim and print. And then all of a sudden you start having awareness, which I call, you know, you start having eminence in the market. And and there's a great term, Johnny, recency trumps loyalty. And that's why you've got a guy that's been in real estate for five or six years that all of a sudden has become relevant because you're in the heat. You're the man that's carrying the listings and sales. So I'm getting, I'm getting that plus accept that you're going to have to invest in a bit of money, take some of your money that you're earning, future earnings if you've got an employer that will support you and throw in a few team members because the bigger the dream, the bigger the team. So you've got a big dream, you want to have big numbers. Am I reading, am I reading that's what it's been like so far or is there more to it? 
now 100%. It's, it's that simple. And like I've, I've watched a lot of your stuff, a lot of other trainers' stuff. And again, it was just a common theme. And, and what you've just said is basically what everyone else said in a nutshell. So I, I followed that and we put discipline and habit in our business. And that's one thing we've been really good at is just discipline, just doing it day in, day out. And it took a year or two to get to that point. Um, we're at a point now where we're meeting 100 buyers a weekend and we're, now we're getting repeat and referral. But now we are going in there and we, we list the list. So we go there and we're always generally getting two appraisals from a listing and one listing from a listing. So I'm a big believer. If you've always got five listings, you should always have five. If you've got 10, you should always have 10. If you're really working with the consumers right, they're inquiring on the property, if that makes sense. So we're getting a lot of business from existing stock. Well, you know, Frank, he makes a very valid point. Success marketing. Every time, like, think about this. Every time you get a listing, think about this. This is what you could tell the market. Coming soon, number one. Open for inspection, number two. Number three, invite you to our auction. Number four, just sold. Number five, you have new neighbours. Number six, would you like to know the new value of your home? Mm. You have six opportunities to brainwash people in that street every time you get a listing. So I tell agents, Frank, if you get a listing, success is not selling it. Success is being able to sell it plus get three other listings because it gave you scale. It mm. gave you a reason. It gave you the opportunity to magnify who you are and what you do. And I reckon Johnny does that well because what percentage of your business is auction? Uh, be 90, 95% of our business. Yeah, well, that's the great thing about auction. You know, you list a property up for auction, the world knows. Yeah. You the property off market as a private treaty, you become New Zealand's secret agent, not their attraction agent. Uh, we have a question here, um, uh, Tom. I just uh, got a question here from Catherine. Said, "What would you recommend for newer agents in terms of prospecting during lockdown, since we can't uh, knock slash drop flyers?" So, you know, quite a relevant um, for relevant for the the times we're in now. What would you say, Johnny? Oh, uh, look, I, I'm really old school in my prospecting, so picking up the phone. Yeah, I think incredible opportunity to be on the phones. I know when we went into lockdown, I uh, I, I, was, I was making more calls because it was, you're stuck at home, um, you're, you're sick of the missus and the dog and whatnot. It's actually probably not. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. And there was very few other people picking up the phone at that time. And I, I found that, was that there was a lot of uncertainty um, out there and a lot of people were really happy to hear from a real estate agent. Yes. Um, that's not always the case. So um, I think I think that was that would be what I'd be doing. I'd be picking up the phone and building data. Yes. And... and, and one question on that would be, so I know you're, you're, the first call we did was, you know, I've just sold this one. I've just listed this one. What does it look like if you don't yet have that property? You know, what is that piece of value that you could give to that person if, you, if you're, you're starting off very, very, very fresh? Yeah, so, sorry. So from, from now or when you're first starting? You know, so when you're first starting. So, so, you know, talking with Catherine there, it's like, you know, what could Catherine be doing? If, you know, Catherine didn't have a listing at the moment. What would the, you know, what is that, what's that first thing to start you off in terms of those calls to start building that momentum? Yeah, I, you could always go something fairly similar. Like that was, by the way, when I was making those cold calls, I didn't sold or list anything. I don't have any listings. Right. I said, <laughs> we've just sold this and oh, we've right. just listed yeah. that. So, you know, I've, <laughs> I'd just find people, I'd find people that have sold or listed in your area and just call them up. And if you've got your dialogue right and you know your stats and stuff, people actually don't question how long you've been in the business for. Yes. Um, so that's that's what I'd be doing. I'd be doing that. And why I'd be doing that is because it adds value. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it was just, if it was warm calls, I was just ringing people saying, how's your world look at the moment? Simple yeah. as that. And just opening up the conversation. Probably my conversations were a bit longer with people because yeah. uh, we, we all needed more time. Um but yeah, that's, that's what I'd be doing if I was Catherine. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I would, and I wouldn't, you know, I, I presume the person that wrote that question um, there, Frank, is in Auckland at the moment. Yep. I would yes. I yep. that they're in Auckland, you know. Yep. Um, and, you know, all I'll say to you is that real estate agents in Melbourne who I consider to have had um, the hardest and the harshest and the longest lockdown, you know, I'm not in that area, but I know plenty of my clients have. They continued throughout the whole process of doing what Johnny said. They were taking advantage of the fact that they had a captive audience. They were at home and um, they had time. 
And in fact, there have been real estate groups. Um, Ray White, for instance, did do research that showed the average call length of concierge, the calls that they were having were three times as longer, yeah, during wow. lockdown, which basically says people had an appetite to have conversations because they weren't as busy. But I, I, really I, would, I really wouldn't neglect, you know, I had a client that ended up picking up seven listings doing a Zoom webinar. They invited their whole database to a right. Zoom webinar and they basically said, hey, we want to tell you what's happened in the market in the last 90 days. And we want to tell you what we think is going to happen in the market in the next 90 days. Right. And they had on there, they had people from the council, they had someone from CoreLogic, RP Data. Yeah, um, right. and, and the great thing is everyone that attended the webinar had to opt in and put their data in which basically became a prospecting tool. So there are things that you can be doing. And of course, social media, Jacinta Ardent doesn't care whether you post stuff on social media or whether you're using your phone. You can't spread COVID uh, by either of those two means. So uh, work with what you've got, where you're at right now. Great. Listen, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Keep going, Johnny, you've got four weeks to go before uh, Christmas. And um, I'm curious, right at the moment, if you are gonna list a property in the next one or two weeks, right? Will that property go on the market for before Christmas or go on the market for after Christmas? Yeah, if we list it next week, we're on the market next week, which means we get a three week auction campaign and uh, 16th of December is our last auction day. Um, so it'll be before, but they've, they've only got a week. And I've, I've made that very known to my chase list at the moment in my pipeline. And the other thing, they could wait till January or February, but right now there's a shortage of stock and there's two or three times the buyers in the marketplace. Mm. How does the market look in January, February? Don't know, but there's security right now and that there's no stock and lots of buyers. Kiwi Bank here in um, New Zealand today just, just um, released all their pre-approvals, you know, so things can change pretty quickly. Mm. Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, your chase list, um, do you use a CRM system? Or do you just have it separated on a on an Excel document or a piece of paper? What, what's your chase list look like? Yeah, we've got an internet system, which is called H1 at Harcourts. So I've just got the mobile app, the H1 app, which is the Harcourts app. And it's real simple. I have chase list for people selling in the next 12 months. And I've got past and present clients. That's all I've got. So I'll be driving. I'll have a sheet with my appraisals from the year. Um, I've got all my clients. I just put a little house emoji next to my clients. I can go into my contact list, press the house emoji, all my clients come up. Um, and then I've got the chase list, which there's about 150 people in there at the moment. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. well, I've got to but make it simple. Because I'm, I mean, us real estate, we're simple human beings, real estate agents, eh? So I just try and make it as simple <laughs> as possible. Love that. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure having this conversation with you, Johnny. Frank, thanks for uh, getting Johnny on. But I just think, you know, that last half hour, if you're a guy or girl that's sort of there, having this argument with their brain on what they should be doing to get them in their game. I've got to tell you, um, I think you've simplified um, the process. It's not easy, but it's worth it. The first one or two years is quite different to what it's going to be like later. Every winner was once a beginner. Every, every attraction agent was once a hustler. And I reckon that 80% of winning is just beginning, making the decision. I'm going to give it a crack. So um, who knows, maybe 2022 is the year that, you know, you've inspired someone to accept, hey, I've just got to make 2022 the year that I'm going to reach out and I'm going to get myself in the game. And then 23, 24, 25 will be the next phase of it where I'll have more people reaching out and calling me, which you happen, you know, and that's when real estate becomes good, when they call you more than you call them. Absolutely. It makes it all worth it at that point in time, mate. Eh? <laughs> Yang signing off. Kia ora, New Zealand. Thank you. Thanks, Johnny. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Thanks guys. Enjoy the day. Cheers. Bye.